Hello and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we are going to export a virtual machine from VirtualBox. We're going to extract the VMDK, the disk file, from it. We're going to move that disk file over to a Proxmox VE server, convert it to QCOW2, and attach it to and make it bootable from a virtual machine on Proxmox. So without further delay, let's get started. We're at the VirtualBox screen right now and we're gonna export the Debian Fog virtual machine. So we'll go to File, Export Appliance, Debian Fog is selected, we'll say Continue. It's going to be Open Virtualization Format 1.0. We're going to change the location to my Downloads folder where I've got some other OVA files put already. Right here, Debian Fog, OVA, Save, Continue. And we're going to export. And so while we're waiting for this to export, this is a fine time to ask you fine viewers to like, subscribe, and consider leaving comments at the end of the video. As you probably guessed by now, if you followed my channel for any length of time, I'm kind of a virtualization junkie and I have been since 1999 or 2000 when the first VMware product was released, which was just simply called VMware. And I was actually running that on a cobbled together second or third hand, uh, I believe first generation Pentium machine. And I installed VMware on top of Linux. And that was sort of where my love affair with virtualization began. That product later morphed into what's now known as VMware Workstation. So I'm going to pause this video right now because this is going to take some time to complete and we will come back when the process has finished and we're ready to start the next step. All right, we have successfully exported our Debian Fog 1 virtual machine. So we're going to go over to the terminal and we're going to see what we've got here to work with. We've got our Debian fog onega file and we're going to extract that tar and the command we want is xf and we'll let that rip and I'll be back once this has completed okay so we've got the files extracted the Debian Fog 1 dash disk 001 dot VMDK is what we're going to use to copy over to the Proxbox server. So we're going to use SCP. I'm going to say Debian Fog 1 dash disk 001 dot VMDK and we're going to copy it to root at 150 slash, uh, colon slash temp. Enter the password and that'll copy over and I will pause the video and I'll be back momentarily. All right, we finished copying our disk over. So now we're gonna connect to the Proxmox server via SSH. And we'll move to the temp directory. And so we've got our Debian fog disk right there. 
Now we're going to convert the disk to a QCOW2 format. To do that, we're going to use the Q emu image command. We're going to tell it convert. We're going to tell it the type we're starting with or the from side. And it's a VMDK. And we're going to give the file name and our output format is qcow2 and the output file name is fogserver.qcow2 That's going to take a few minutes. So while this is doing the conversion, we're going to move over to the Proxmox web interface. Okay, in Proxmox, you would right click on PVE and create a VM. Fog server, next. Do not use any media. Next. Next. I actually have to put that on my storage space labeled my ISOs. I will fix that later. Two CPU cores, two gigs of RAM. Network is bridged finish and in a moment or two here we'll have the VM created. We're going to go to hardware. We're going to click on the hard disk. We're going to say detach. Yes. And it comes up as unused disk. We'll click on that and say remove. Confirm it again. And that's going to delete that. And now we know that our new VM name or number rather is 105. And we'll take a jump back over to the command line and see where we're at. All right, we are ready for the next step. So we are going to import. To import the disk, we say QM import disk. Specify the VM number, 105. Specify the QCOW2 file name. And the preferred Proxmox storage location. In this case, it's going to be my ISOs. And we let that go. And this will take a few moments, especially since it's, I believe, a 30 gigabyte disk that we're playing with. So I'm going to pause and we'll be back momentarily. All right. We have finished the importing piece and we'll jump back to the web interface of Proxmox. As you can see down here at the bottom, we're in the hardware tab. Down here at the bottom, we've got unused disk. And if we double click on that, we'll find out some information about it. And we click add. All right. So now we've got hard disk here. We need to go to options and change the boot order. And so we just double click and select from the list IDE 0. OK. And then on the left side, right click VM 105 and 
click start down here in the bottom it's got a status if we go to console it is in fact booting and we will bring that up full screen hopefully it's booting Houston we have a problem okay so something's not quite right we're gonna go ahead and stop the VM and we'll take a look at hardware again two gigs of RAM two cores BIOS let's do the OVMF UEFI okay that's not going to be the way to do it uh, display default that should be fine because it's going to be a command line level OS we interact with fog in the web interface so it's fine default uh, machine default let's change that to Q35 and see if we have any better luck hard disk we've got network all right let's try booting this thing one more time maybe we won't be successful with this 50% of two CPUs go to console hmm well let's jump back over to virtual box just for grins and see what we gave this that was two gigs two processor cores Thirty gig drive bridge networking that uh, should have transferred over without an issue. This is rather perplexing. Well, I'm going to pause the video and do a little investigating, and I'll be back all right so after some fiddling around i discovered the issue is with the particular vm that i tried to import into proxmox ve so i went through the first part of the process again off camera exported another vm this time and the big difference was the the second one I exported is using a regular BIOS versus a UEFI disk uh, or GPT disk rather to be proper about it. And so I've gone through most of the process and we'll jump back over to the Proxmox interface now. Okay, so we're back at the Proxmox interface we're on VM 100. I deleted a couple other VMs. I added this one fresh. So we're going to double click on the disk. Um, and we'll add it. We will go into options and set the boot option to be IDE zero. And then we'll come over here and we will start the VM and it's spinning down here. If we jump over to console, 
we do in fact have a booting VM. There it goes. So the, the moral of the story at the moment, I do not have the answer for importing EFI slash GPT disks into VMs on Proxmox. I know it can be done. I just haven't found the correct set of instructions to accomplish it successfully. But once I come across those instructions and have gone through the process once myself, I will do another video and we will go over that. And it looks like we kernel panicked. That's not cool. So let's look at our options again. And nothing is really 5.x to 2.x kernel. Right, that's fine. Use tablet for pointer, hot plug, ACPI. Let's jump back to VirtualBox and see, did we in fact set ACPI on this when we built it advanced? And motherboard processor PENX is off. Well, I'm not entirely sure why this isn't booting, but I have, in fact, brought over machines using this process before. Uh, the pre-built OVA images that you can download from Bitnami, I got that to work without a hitch. Um, this particular one coming from VirtualBox, I guess I'm going to have to play with a few of the settings again, but the basic process is good. The, the basic process is good. I, ha I did use it for the Bitnami WordPress appliance. I'm going to try this one more time. Uh, but anyways, the, the thing that I'm trying to get at here is you can build VMs on VirtualBox or VMware or Hyper-V and export them in such a fashion that you can bring them over to Proxmox, which is really kind of cool because you build something on a desktop virtualization platform or a type two hypervisor and you move it over to something like Proxmox to a type one hypervisor. So on that note, I'm going to end the video here. If I figure out the kernel panic issue, I will update you later, but that is going to wrap up this particular video. I want to thank you once again for watching. Stay safe during this pandemic period and follow the guidelines that are in effect in your particular area. And I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.